Okay, rational numbers. So the goal of this video is to get you to understand a lot about rational numbers, and let's see if we can do this in a short period of time. Uh, before we get started, uh, I am a, a math teacher, middle school math, high school math, college math. Um, so I hope uh, you consider subscribing to my channel. I do a ton of videos on uh, subjects uh, that if you're, you know, or, uh, at any one of these levels of mathematics, you'll find, you know, I think very beneficial. So if you do subscribe, make sure you hit that bell notification. I do have full and comprehensive uh, courses, which are really go much more uh, detailed. So if you're interested in those uh, uh, courses, I'll leave the link in the description of this video. So you can check that out if you're interested. But with that being said, let's get into rational numbers. Okay, so before I can define rational numbers, we need to just talk about numbers in general. Okay, now you're, I'm not going to go off on a tangent here. It's important that you understand this in order to really have a grasp on rational numbers. So basically, when you're in elementary school, middle school, and like the beginning of high school, until you get into more uh, complex math, you really um, uh, focus on learning and mastering what we call the real number system, right? So this is the basic real number line. So let's just write that down, real numbers, okay? Now, you might say, well, what are the numbers are there? Well, as you progress, more like say in Algebra 2, uh, you know, if you're taking more advanced math and uh, you're finishing up in high school or definitely in college, you're gonna be learning complex numbers, okay? So there's other uh, more complicated number systems um, that you know you'll be learning uh, above and beyond the real numbers, but real numbers is what you really have to master and understand rational numbers. Okay, so the real number system is all the number types on a number line. Okay, so in contrast to um, uh, complex numbers, complex numbers you won't be able to plot on a number line like this. Okay, so real numbers. You have 0, 1, 2, 3, negative 1, negative 2. You're probably familiar with these numbers as being integers. Okay, so these guys here are integer numbers. Okay, then you have, uh, if I just uh, talk about um, 1, 2, 3 here, I could define these guys as the, the counting numbers, natural number system. If I throw on a 0, I have the whole number system, etc. So the real numbers, okay, have all these different subsets of type of numbers on them, okay? So let's just quickly uh, um, review them, okay? So on the real numbers, real number system, you'll have like the counting numbers, sometimes it's called the natural number system, whole numbers, you'll have integers, and then you have uh, Q, Okay, now Q is a rational number. So let's go ahead and define rational number now. And then actually just let's put it up here just so we don't forget. I R, irrational number. So numbers are either rational or irrational. Okay, when we use this word rational. Okay, so what does this mean? Let's give you the big definition now. Basically, a rational number is a number that um, you can write as a fraction. Okay. Now, it's not just any fraction, it's a fraction using integers, okay? So any number you can construct, uh, uh, turn into a fraction, uh, is a rational number. So one half is a rational number. Negative three fifths is a rational number, okay? Even, uh, let's say, two. Now two, sometimes these numbers can have be uh, classified in a lot of different ways, so two, is a natural number or a counting number. It's also a whole number. It's also an integer and it's also a rational number because two, you can write as two over one. So any number you can write as a fraction where the numerator and denominator are integers is a rational number. Now, let's take a look at kind of stealthy rational numbers. What if I said 0.25? Is that a rational number? So. You know, a lot of students say, no, that's not a rational number, that's not a fraction. That's not what I said, right? What I said was, if you can write the number, okay, as I did two, as a fraction of integers, that's a rational number. So 0.25 
is equal to the fraction 1 fourth. Okay, so therefore it is a rational number. 0.3 is the fraction 1 third. 0.5 is the fraction 1 half, right? So all these decimal uh, decimals here are, in fact, rational numbers. Now, let's go ahead and contrast uh, this to an irrational number, because it's important that you understand that. And I think we'll kind of wrap up the video so we don't make it too long. So an irrational number is a number that you cannot you cannot write as a fraction. A good example of this is the uh, number pi, okay? Or, uh, well, most of you probably know that that's around 3.14. Now, that number is not equivalent to 3.14. That's just a estimation. The, the, the deal with pi, okay, the reason why we have this symbol, because this number goes on and on and on. I don't have a calculator in front of me, so I don't know the digits off the top of my head beyond 3.14, but let's just kind of make some up. 3.14, 1.5, whatever they are, they keep going on and on and on and on and on and on until infinity, okay? Now, one of the deals here is that uh, pi is what we call non-repeating, okay? So the digits are not repeating. So in other words, if I have three point, or for example, if I have 3.171717171717, you can, um, this is a repeating decimal, okay? Oftentimes, you can uh, rewrite the, write these as a uh, rational number. Matter of fact, you can, but that's for another uh, video. The deal with an irrational number is it's non-repeating, okay? So the digits here are just coming up random. Two, seven, I mean, it's nobody's guess. You actually have to know. So it's non-repeat, it's it's not repeating in any particular manner, and it's non-terminating. Uh, so it just goes on forever with random digits coming, etc. So instead of trying to write this entire number out, which is impossible, we just give it a symbol, okay? Pi. So uh, other examples of irrational number would be like, say, square root of two, okay? The square root of two is also an irrational number, okay? It, the, if you look in your calculator, you're gonna get a decimal 1.141, da, 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 da. Just because it, the decimal stops on your calculator screen doesn't mean it terminates. It keeps going forever in a non-repeating, uh, non-terminating fashion. So, so when we're looking at decimals or trying to identify what a rational number is, remember a uh, rational number is a decimal that you know, has a, uh, a pattern and it stops, okay? But really the most important thing is that you can take that decimal and write it as a fraction. So these are some basic examples here of that. So wrap it up. A rational number is a number you can write as a fraction where the numerator and denominator are integer values. But I'm going to give you one little bonus definition here, and that is rational expressions. Rational expressions. So in algebra, we had rational numbers, right? So like we had, say, two-fifths is a rational number. But when we use the word expression and not number, now we're talking about um, a, basically a fraction that involves variables. So if I have 2x plus 1 over x, now I'm dealing with the rational expression, okay? Not this is a rational number, this is a rational expression, but basically the idea when you hear rational, you really need to be thinking in terms of fractions. Rational expressions in algebra even have a little bit more specific definition, but essentially fractions, okay? But not any fraction. One last little uh, check here of understanding. If I had the square root of 3 over 2, this is not a rational number because... Although it's a fraction, don't be tricked, okay? This is not an integer. This is an irrational number, okay? All right, so let's wrap this up. That is rational numbers. Um, hopefully, you know, I was able to explain this in a decent amount of time, but I didn't want to uh, leave you, uh, you know, without all the really important uh, information. So again, I hope you consider subscribing to my channel. You'll find tons of uh, useful videos on various levels of mathematics. Make sure you hit that bell notification. If you got something out of this video, I'd definitely appreciate a thumbs up and leave me some feedback. It's uh, it's kind of the way I know how I'm doing and if uh, people have particular questions or want me to do a video on a, a specific uh, math topic or, or whatnot, I'm happy to do so. So it gives me ideas. It helps me improve. But with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best and have a great day.